Ladies and gents, welcome back. Now, this whole channel started blowing up after a tweet that I made, and that was uh, some weeks ago. I tweeted out there saying, in case any of you are confused, there's a group of truckers in Canada who are 90% vaccinated, protesting government overreach and citizens being tracked with QR codes. If you hear otherwise, you might be being lied to. Now... <laughs> The, the the whole point of the protests were about the mandates and mandates being this uh, app that's on your phone and it's a federal uh, piece of legislation and it's a requirement for people to be tracked with QR codes for our safety. Now, people said, people have been saying since the beginning, this is an overreach and it's going to lead to other things. And this is, is when the pandemic's gone, they're not going to get rid of this system, this infrastructure. And that's that's the whole idea. And this is why people are upset about it. And then this comes out. And this was point, put in my put to my attention just today. Canada is on the cusp of a revolutionary innovation that will transform the way Canadians authenticate themselves online and protect their identity. Digital ID. All of us are living in a digital world, but we're tethered to an analog model of how we identify ourselves. Memorizing countless online passwords, carrying government-issued licenses, plastic cards, and more. Digital ID is a way for Canadians to identify themselves to government, businesses, and each other electronically, with ease and rock-solid security, without the need to present physical documents. One interconnected network. A federated digital ID ecosystem developed in collaboration with Canada's best and brightest talent from our banks, telecommunication companies, law enforcement, and government. It would have the power and security to store every Canadian's electronic identity and attributes. And it would unlock countless opportunities for Canadians to verify who they are safely, quickly, and securely, while only revealing the information necessary for each transaction. A fast, easy, and secure way to bank, sign up for government services, renew driver's licenses or health cards, shop, travel, and more. Canada's banks are perfectly situated to help lead the creation of a federated digital ID system between government and the private sector. The World Economic Forum agrees that banks and financial institutions should lead the path forward for digital ID. Banks are highly regulated and trusted. They have advanced cybersecurity and privacy technology, and they have the infrastructure to operate provincially and nationally. So a lot of this, it's a lot of information to take in at once. The World Economic Forum agrees banks should lead digital ID. Of course they are. And uh, so regulated and trusted. Banks are regulated and trusted. Well, a lot of trust has been lost over this, uh, this last few weeks, especially with the emergency measures and uh, the loss of trust in our fin financial system across Canada. A lot of people pulling their money out due to regime uncertainty. Now, the question here is <laughs> the World Economic Forum. And now this is this is a thing that only only months ago was a conspiracy theory and now is is and was taboo. You weren't allowed to talk about it. And now it's a, a big thing. It's <laughs> everybody's asking questions now, including our uh, members of government are asking because their constituents are, are asking questions. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I listened to my colleague's speech. I had a constituent that wanted me to ask a question about outside interference to our democracy. Klaus Schwab is the head of the World Economic Forum and he bragged how his subversive WWF World Economic Forum has quoted infiltrated governments around the world. He said that his organization had penetrated more than half of Canada's cabinet and I was wondering, in the interest of transparency, could the member please name which cabinet ministers are on board with the WEF's agenda? My concern is the deputy. Uh, order, order, order. I, I know it was. I know the, uh, the member was in a, a really good, good question there, but the, the the audio is really, really bad, and the video is really, really bad as well. Um, and I and I and I apologize. I don't know if the, the the really good question that I heard clearly, but the audio was so bad that I can't answer it. If the member, okay, uh, let's let's uh, let's try again. The honorable. The, the, the Honourable Member for Timmins-James Bay. 
Right, right. And right afterwards, there was an objection from another member <laughs> saying that this is a conspiracy theory. Now we have Alberta Premier Jason Kenney talks about the Great Reset. He was asked by one of his constituents in this meeting. Where do you stand on the Great Reset the Liberals are planning on introducing? Well, I, I, let me just say that, first of all, what is this Great Reset? Uh, the, uh, Pierre Polyev, the federal conservative finance critic, recently raised concerns about this, and then he was attacked by some in the media and by the liberals for supposedly circulating conspiracy theories. Well, The Great Reset is actually the name of a book by a very prominent advocate of it. It's, his name is Klaus Schwab. He sent me a copy. I guess he sent one to every, probably Available every government leader around the world. And Klaus Schwab's uh, thesis in his book is that we should, governments and societies, the world, should, quotes, seize the opportunity of the public health and economic crisis to reimagine the world and radically change policies. Now, in what ways? I would describe it as a grab bag of left-wing ideas for less freedom and more government, for more government intervention, uh, for um, policies that would uh, I think create massive poverty, uh, particularly energy policy, uh, policies that he is advocating. So Klaus Schwab, by the way, is the president and founder of the World Economic Forum, also known as the Davos Summit. I call it the biggest gathering of global hypocrites uh, in history. It's, the, um, it's a little ski village in Switzerland, and every, I think, February, um, a couple of thousand super rich uh, people, uh, a lot of billionaires, millionaires, global CEOs, and politicians fly into Davos men, with hundreds of private airplanes. They go into Switzerland and they spend a week basically lecturing uh, the rest of the world, including especially working women and men, about how they should reduce their carbon footprint. Uh, uh, the hypocrisy in that crowd is is so uh, thick, you can't even cut it with a knife. And so, no, I'm not going to be taking any uh, policy direction from Klaus Schwab or his his ilk. But, and what I find offensive, look, the so-called Great Reset is not a conspiracy theory. It is a actual set of, propo of concrete proposals being advocated by some very influential people and including, apparently, by Prime Minister Trudeau, who clearly alluded to it, referred to it, quoted from it, the Schwab theory uh, in a speech he gave to the United Nations a couple of months ago. So it's not a conspiracy theory to talk about that. Those are the folks advocating it. And I think it's perfectly legitimate for democratically elected leaders for me to say, heck no, we're not going to exploit or take, the, uh, take advantage of a crisis to uh, advance a political agenda. Okay, I'm going to leave the, the link to this in its entirety in the description down below because, <laughs> yeah, it's running a bit long here. But, yeah, Jason Kenney talking about the Great Reset. This is So this is something that, again, I said only months ago was taboo to bring up. You'd get dismissed for talking about this, that it was a, a giant conspiracy theory. Now we see that this man is a real man, even though he's, he's like comically looks like a Bond villain or whatever. He's got the same uh, stereotypical German accent as a super villain from a comic book. But he's written these books that are available on Amazon. Klaus Schwab, The Great Reset, and his more, his more recent publication, The Great Narrative for a Better Future. Like how to, how to shape the narrative. And we've all been seeing this. In real time, you're paying attention to me because the narrative is is the media, is the news media that's not telling you what's actually going on. So, and not to mention, they have their own YouTube channel. They have had it for a long time. Uh, pretty big, a bigger following than when I first started looking into this. Uh, yeah, they've got quite a quite a bit. It's it's a, it's comical how few views they get on their videos because of how large and how much influence they have in government itself. But uh, yeah, no, this is this is an actual thing. But 
This is the reason why we had the convoy in Canada because of the implementation of policies getting back to my original point. In case you're confused, there's a group of truckers in Canada who are 90% vaccinated, more than the average in Canada. Truckers are 90% vaccinated, but they're protesting government overreach and citizens being tracked with QR codes. If you hear otherwise, you might be being lied to. And that also brings to mind the new convoy that's rearing up to go in the United States. And it's, uh, it's well on its way to uh, probably being bigger than the Canadian convoy itself. So we'll see what happens. I'm going to keep you guys posted. I'm going to keep covering this story, probably bring more of the uh, stuff about the Great Reset as I get more information. Um, I want to give you less of like conspiratorial type stuff and more more just solid proof stuff that's being implemented, things that have been said, actually, not just conjecture. So anyway, keep on trucking.